In this tutorial, we will look at gate level modeling and behavioral modeling of simple logic gates. The design portion here has a module called logic gates. It has two inputs A and B, both of which are 6 bits wide, and two outputs Y and Z, and the outputs are also 6 bits wide. So the first part of the module is going to uh, show you the uh, gate level modeling. For gate level modeling, we use the primitives provided by system Verilog, which are NOT, AND, OR, NAND, NOR, XOR. And these names tally with the gates that we are trying to model. So the NOT gate and all other primitives also in this list expect as the first parameter the output and the rest of the parameters that are listed are inputs. So for the NOT gate since we just have one input um, the first parameter that we list is the output and the second parameter here listed as A of 0 the least significant bit of A is the uh, input to the NOT gate. Similarly for the AND gate A of 1 and B of 1 are the inputs. The output is Y of 1 and the OR gate has A of 2 and B of 2 as inputs and the output is Y of 2. So likewise we have all these primitives listed and the first parameter is the output and the rest of them are inputs and that's how we do the gate level modeling. So moving on, the second part of the module discusses the behavioral modeling. The behavioral modeling is uh, done by using the bitwise operators and as you can see here we use the tilde operator for the NOT gate, the ampersand operator for the AND gate, the pipe symbol for the OR gate and for NAND and NOR, we do the AND operation and the OR operation and then we have the tilde operator to uh, get the complement of the AND or the OR operation. Um, so this helps us get uh, the NANDed result in Z of 3 and the NOR result in Z of 4. And finally for the XOR gate, we use the uh, operator uh, which is which looks like the caret symbol to accomplish the XOR operation. So the with the primitive modeling you see that it uses the first output Y and the behavioral modeling uses the second output Z. The operations being performed uh, are uh, identical for both uh, the gate level modeling and the behavioral modeling so when we run in simulation we should expect the Y and the Z values to have identical uh, values when when we look at the results in the waveform. So let's go and uh, look at the test bench. The test bench uh, is a fairly simple test bench. We've got uh, um, A, B, Y and Z signals uh, declared here and uh, the instantiation of our design happens here. With the instantiation is usually you see the name of the module followed by the instance name and the dot star is just to auto connect the ports of the design with the uh, test bench. Uh, I also have a system Verilog uh, class here and uh, the A and the B signals are declared to be of uh, type RAND. So we will use the uh, transmit function here in order to randomize the uh, input packet and once we uh, successfully randomize it we uh, generate, we use the A and the B values which are uh, the result of the randomization and we uh, assign them to A and B signals of our test bench and since 
the signals of the test bench are uh, mapped to the signals of the design via this instantiation. The inputs are injected into the design. So the transmit function here is being called uh, for a total of uh, 10 times but between each call of the transmit function we wait for two cycles. So that gives uh, uh, some time to process the uh, for the design to process the input and uh, we enables us to look at the result in the waveform. So now that we have done a quick study of the design and the test bench code. Let's run the simulation and uh, let's look at the results. So when I run the simulation here and look at the waveform, uh, the easiest way to tell that uh, there is uh, uh, that the simulation is working is by looking at uh, the Y and the Z signals here for all the values of uh, different values of A and B inputs and we find that Y and Z appear to be uh, identical. So that's a pretty good sign that uh, the design does what it's expected to do. And we can also quickly uh, eyeball the result and uh, um, we can verify that uh, uh, the output is consistent with uh, our expectations. So for example, in this case, the input signal uh, A, the least significant bit of A has a value of 1. So the least significant bit of the outputs Y and Z is the not of the least significant uh, bit of A. So you can see that when the least significant bit of the input is a 1, the least significant bit of both outputs Y and Z is a 0. So it uh, seems like the uh, design is working as expected and for all the other uh, input values um, to verify the outputs I leave that as an exercise to the viewer.